Dunmore, how are you? I'm good. Hello, Matt and Tracy. Um, I want to start off by saying I think it is um, horrendously absurd to compare religion to child abuse. Um, Um, I do not abuse the children who I am teaching religion to. I am enlightening them, broadening their mind. George? Yes, sir. Yes. Um, I don't necessarily equate religious teaching to child abuse. Well, I sat here and listened to rambling on for about 20 minutes about indoctrination. Okay, George, um, let's be clear. I have on occasion said that some religious teaching, some religious instruction should be viewed as a form of child abuse. I do not equate religious teaching with child abuse. And Tracy, wasn't necessarily talking about religious teaching at all. She was talking about an actual distinction between indoctrination and socialization that applies beyond religion. And if all you're going to do is come in butthurt and saying that that you listen to her ramble for 20 minutes, we're probably not going to have a very productive call. Well, I'm glad to hear you say that, sir, but that's the way I interpreted that. Well, that's not what I said, though. is Is it still the way you interpret it? Well, as long as you make yourself clear now, then it's fine. Well, People hear what they want to yeah. hear, I think, sometimes. So anyway, what else? Well, the reason I called in was because on this show I've noticed the hosts never stop talking about how there is no evidence of God in this world. Well, no, I, no I, good I, evidence. I have a list here of evidence that I can give you other than the Bible. Yeah, it, what my, I, I would clarify to say that there's no good evidence or there is not sufficient evidence there is it is it is it is it is false it is false to say that there's no evidence because under you know when people are talking about anecdotal evidence and things like that of course there are testimonies and no, there's I've all sorts of times the whole of the show would say that I, there is no evidence I, I understand that George I am trying to clarify this for you so that so that you understand that yes in the in the past there have been mistakes made by me and by others where in the context of the discussion, we say, oh, there's no evidence for the existence of God. And what, we're, what we mean and what we should be saying is that there is not sufficient evidence for the existence of God or that there is no good evidence for the existence of God well, from our, per, from, 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 from our point of view. Well, I hardly, dis- I have to disagree with you, it's sir. Here's best evidence. I-, I have a list here of evidence I could give you that I'm one. sure you, sure. you cannot deny. It's can you give us the, the best one? That the best there one. There is a God. Can you, give us, can you give us the best one? Yes, sir. The miracle of the sun. The miracle of the sun? <laughs> the yeah, miracle of the sun, sir. Fatima. When the Blessed Virgin Mary appeared in Fatima in 1917 to the three children, one of them being Lucia dos Santos, who lived her outer days until 2005. So this is not a witness from thousands and thousands of years ago. This is a woman who, up until a few years ago, was still alive. Okay. But Go ahead. Yeah. George, is, is this the same one where they, they said the sun was moving all over the place? There were um, at least 30,000 people that went, witnessed it, Adam. Yeah, least, I, that's not it, really substantiated. I've, I've looked this up it before. Is it, yeah, the it, newspaper article. It, yeah, right I know. It was some reporting that was done, and reporting is never wrong. Before but, the expanded size of the crowd. Yeah, I, that, I know. I, I'm just saying that you can look up. You, you can, George, are you going to listen or talk? You can look up assessments of it's this. Incredible movement, South. George, okay. listen to Tracy for a second. You, you can actually look up rebuttal. Let's just put it on hold for a second. You can look up rebuttals to this for the viewers. He just keeps talking, so yeah, he doesn't know you're talking. For the viewers that are watching, you can go and look this up. There are rebuttals to it. The information is not as solid as uh, you might think by the people that claim it. Now, that being said, I was trying to confirm with George, because I don't have the information right in front of me, whether or not this was the miracle where they claimed that the sun was moving all over the sky. Um, and if that is in fact the case, I would like to know how uh, the Earth didn't go flying out of its orbit. Oh, is he? Uh, I, you there, George? Yeah. It, the, the Earth did not go flying out of its orbit because it was, was a miracle which was being controlled by God. 
okay. and God prevented that from happening. So the sun, this is the one where they said the sun was just going all over the place, but nobody else saw it, right? Like it wasn't, it wasn't reported anywhere else in the world where the sun was showing at that time. Is that correct? Yes, well, that's, okay. it's a miracle. Which yeah, is, it could also be an incorrect report. By 30,000 plus people? It wasn't sure. that many people. Um, you need to go and look and see how valid these sources are. So here's the thing. First of all, um, we have no way of actually investigating this. And the, we don't know how. <laughs> can I finish, George? Can I finish for real? For, for realsies, can I talk? There are, there are witnesses. George. I, George. I George. George, there, there is wait, there's no verification to these claims. No, there, there is no there was we've done this before. There is no um, there were no uh, what do you call it like um, observatories that reported that the sun moved from its place in the sky. There was no other reports from any other place where it was daytime at the time saying that the sun had moved. There was I mean there is nothing to substantiate that what these people claimed they saw really occurred. Nothing to verify it. It's just their claim. And, and moreover the point that I was trying to get to is that we have a report of something happening. Even if those people are honest and this is what they apparently saw we have no demonstration that A, it actually happened, or B, that it was supernatural in origin. Maybe there was some right. sort of atmospheric well, phenomenon that caused an illusion. No, but but would you, sh you better let me finish. I swear to your God, George, I'll hang up on you if you don't let me finish. The other thing is, you have no justification for claiming that the cause of this event, even if it occur occurred, is a God. You cannot claim that without yes, evidence yes, by... Yeah, and I would. I just want to correct one thing. Um, I do think that we can verify that it did not happen. Now, what you were saying, well, can't, we can't verify right. that people didn't experience right. it. Right, and and that was something I wanted to make sure because there was something you said that kind of crossed that line, and I just want to make sure that it was clear to the viewers because there is absolutely. I mean, there are people that would have everybody in the daytime part of the globe at that point would have reported this it would have been reports from everywhere if the sun had actually moved so we know that objectively speaking the externally from the, from the perspective of what did the sun do that day it did not move now if these people said they saw it you you know i don't know how valid the reports are because when you try to look it up and you try to really substantiate this you really can't get any valid reporting out of it it's, it's like this little tiny area in mexico where somebody went and spoke to some people and you get and all it is it's like claims from the bible it's just going and talking to people and they're making saying oh yeah and my cousin george was there and you know it's so you end up with these like relayed secondhand accounts that end up getting reported and then you, you get these conflicting reports and it's just it's a mess but the fact is if the sun was moving around it would have wreaked havoc on the planet observatories would have reported it and every there would have been more than just one little town in some city in Mexico that would have seen the sun flying all over the sky I, I mean it we can absolutely you know say that this whatever they think they saw or didn't see if they're telling any kind of truth out of there that we know that in fact what they think they saw did not occur and as Matt was saying even if something did occur there's no substantiation there that it was produced by a, by a deity and so if we already know that the Sun wasn't actually moving around all over the place then what we're in a position of somebody is telling us that a bunch of people reported that this thing happened which we know didn't happen right. now that doesn't mean they're all lying um, which is the point I was getting at, they could all have thought they saw something. And there could be any number of potential natural explanations, and there could also be supernatural causes. I have no idea. Yeah. And so I'm in a position where I need to investigate and say, okay, can we demonstrate that some phenomena occurred? Well, actually, no, not really. We have a report, and yes, it's a lot of people, but that's an appeal to popularity. And, you know, I can't point to any others with 30,000, but you can go find groups of people who claim to have been abducted by aliens together. That doesn't mean they actually were. Um, by the way, these people are still alive, and they'll tell you their story. You can talk to them right now. So we can't demonstrate that a phenomenon actually occurred, which means we can't even begin to investigate to find out what the potential cause is. What we can do is speculate about what sort of natural causes are more likely. This is something I'm going to talk about next week um, at the North Texas Secular Student Conference when I talk about... Um, uh, skepticism in the nature of evidence, critical thinking, and, and doing some yeah. magic and mentalism as well, is 
In order to determine whether or not what explanations are most probable, you have to have some way of determining the probability of a particular explanation. And so if you roll a die, um, there's six faces. It's a one in six probability that any particular side is going to come up. If you have 100 claims of um, answered prayer, we know, we have evidence that some of those claims of answered prayer are answered by natural explanations or natural explanations are such that they're perceived to be answered prayer. And then there's a bunch of them that we don't know. We have zero confirmed accounts of a supernatural being actually answering prayer. So when you're calculating the probability, it is always more probable that there's a naturalist ex explanation that you don't know than that a god did it. And when you're talking about reports like this, where yeah. we are far removed from the events and the people, we cannot go, we don't have a time machine, we can't go back. And we know, as Tracy pointed out, that the actual claim, oh, the sun moved around, that part is false. Actually, what they should have said is, from our point of view, it appeared that the sun moved around all over. Well, I can't do anything to prove that they didn't experience that, but I also can't explain it. And that's the point. Neither can you. Neither can the people who are claiming that this was a miracle from God. They have no justification for that. And I do want to say, please, please be wary when somebody hands you reports of supernatural phenomenon that come out of like third world areas, small villages. There's no way to confirm this stuff. I mean, people end up going there, they'll report something. I think I gave a, a last time I was on, I talked about um, anthropologists reporting um, about um, exorcism and how when you read the report, it's almost astounding what you read. But then when you see the video, you're just like, there's nothing, I don't see this. I don't see what they're reporting that they saw. So you, people get taken up with you know, a, a situation and think they see things sometimes they don't actually see. And the more people you have sort of enforcing that around you, um, and the more attention that you give to people who claim they saw it, you know, the, the more yeah. positive attention you get for telling a fib. I mean, that's just like the boy who cried wolf. If you keep giving somebody positive attention for, for lying or for saying, yeah, I, I saw it too. Come talk to me, you know, come, come interview me. Uh, there's, there's it couple, happens. Yeah, there's a couple of emails that have come in recently where people have relayed things to me. And one of them is they'd send me to a video of some supposed God healer guy who's doing miraculous healings and causing the blind to see or doing the uh, limb lengthening, which if you go to camera, the, oh, the one shot real quick, um, it's roughly the equivalent of this. You see that? How now that arm's a lot longer. I can fix it by pulling this one out. I mean, that's really the type of thing that people are talking about as miraculous healings. And we already know that a lot of these people are faking. But somebody else yeah. wrote in the other day to, to I, I find it interesting that George's best evidence is this sketchy report. And, and the reason I think that he's convinced of it is because there's a number attached to it. Because right. 30 to 100,000 people reported this. But the rebuttals are all over the internet for this. I yeah. mean, just go and look it up if you have any doubt about the questions that surround this but that's miracle. But that's what he cited as his best evidence. Another individual sent me an email in, the, in this past week talking about the miracles that he's witnessed, including people rising from the dead. Now, that was his first claim. He had witnessed the dead returning to life. And I was tempted to go on and explain that, okay, I, I want specifics. And for example, we don't know that much about defining death. It's not a, necessarily a point right. on a process. And, but he comes back and he tells me the story. Uh, I would say stop me if you've heard this, but everybody would stop me right off the bat. Um, about a young kid who's out on a boat on a lake who falls overboard and is underwater for about 17 minutes or so, and the doctors say that he's not going to revive, and if he does, he's gonna have brain damage, and lo and behold, somebody prays, and the kid recovers. And he sends me this, and I replied and said, okay, these reports, um, while not everyday occurrences, happen a lot, and we've actually done some investigation, or happened enough that we've investigated this, and we've understand about the mammalian diving reflex, and uh, the reaction to, in particular, cold water amplifies this, such that your body will shut down. And kids, the, the suspicion is that this is because of uh, features that are built into us in utero, because you're basically in a sack of fluid, and that kids are more likely to survive in this circumstance than adult. And I'm pointing to all this stuff in order to say that maybe this was a miracle, maybe it wasn't, but we have this naturalistic explanation for it, which we see over and over and seems reasonable. And I send that off and he comes back with, well, no, 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 the water wasn't cold. Uh, I didn't say it had to be. That's not a requirement. I'm just saying it works better in that situation. And by the way, 
Two weeks later, this little boy comes up to his mommy and tells him that Jesus and some angels took him to heaven. How could he know that? How could he? Four-year-olds can't understand life and death that way. Let me tell you something. If you're a four-year-old in a household of people who think that you've just been saved by a miracle, I'd be dumbfounded if within two weeks you weren't claiming that Jesus and the angels took you up there. Kids are little sponges, and they're after their, their, their parents and uh, family members' attention and approval. And if the people in the family, and don't tell me that they weren't, are running around talking about how Jesus saved their son from a drowning death, <laughs> yes. and you think it's a miracle that two weeks later he finally catches on. I'm surprised he wasn't doing it in two days and talks about how Jesus took None of this is miraculous. All of this is mundane. Now, the, the being underwater for 17 minutes and recovering is not uh, normal, everyday happenstance, right. but it's not in the realm of the miraculous. But it's way more miraculous than second and third hand reports of 30,000 people who supposedly saw something that looked like the sun moving around. I mean, come on now. What, what, what about that? I, I'm convinced, I'm, right now, I'm convinced that the thing that was convincing about that was the number. All these people couldn't be wrong. Yes, they could. Yeah, it's always that. And the thing is, there is no way to verify that the number of people that reported it or the number of people who were being accurate. Again, it was like this, it's a tiny piece mm -hmm. of dirt in Mexico somewhere. It was like a little tiny town. It wasn't, it, we're not talking about a metropolis. This isn't like it happened in New York and was captured on ABC, you know, from their cameras. Uh, it wasn't like that. That's not the kind of verification that you're going to find when you start trying to figure out what was actually reported. And, by and when that happens, by the way, when it does happen in New York and yeah. it's captured, we'll have a lot better information to actually investigate, figure out what happened, yeah. if, if anything, and whether or not we can. Yeah, you won't just have hearsay of someone saying, yeah, it's about 30,000 people claiming this, and, you know, I'm telling you this, and how did you, how did you count that number? How yeah. did you? Yeah. Anyway.